Nigeria's popular Aproko doctor. In Kechi, move closer. Dr. Chinonso Egemba is under fire again. This time over GMOs, Bill Gates, and public health. So let's uncover why it's sparking a massive outrage out there. Okay? Hello everyone, welcome back again to my channel. My name is Wemimo and I'm also known as Tat Momo5 and also known as CMO5 Kandiko. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for always coming back. So, Chinonso Egemba, this guy here, widely known as Aproko Doctor, is a Nigerian medical influencer with millions of followers. So, on the 25th of July, 2025, a major story broke. He had promoted genetically modified organisms, GMOs, after appearing in viral photos with Bill Gates, a staunch biotech advocate. This endorsement actually triggered fierce backlash from Nigeria's netizens. Critics said a lot of things. Critics said he only shared the benefits like higher yield and reduced pesticide use and skipped talking about the actual risk of GMOs. Guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section. Have you seen the video he made? I'll share you the video here with you at some point okay so what are the concerns raised by nigerians netizens so the debate centers around major concerns many social media users asked why no mention of glyphosate why no mention of biodiversity loss soil degradation or long-term health effects like allergies and cancer risk which some studies suggest yes africans do we do get allergies yes we get allergies okay people on x I've asked questions like, Chino, so please explain the role of GMO and glyphosate in the, de in the decline in kidney and liver health. So these are one of the concerns and they've asked him to come talk about it. So young Nigerians also pointed out that countries like Austria, Germany, France, Russia, Luxembourg and Italy have banned GMO foods and questioned why Nigeria of all countries should actually adopt it now guys let me know your thought and opinion in regards to that comment there so there's a polarized reaction okay reactions on x formerly known as twitter range from people who are supportive to being suspicious about the things that this doctor is you know talking about some praised him for educating the public while others accused him of being compromised or aligned with foreign biotech interests guys what do you think so a couple of the comments that i found i'm going to put them on the screen netizens asked him to make a video about gmo if he was not compromised and he made a video in fact i'm going to share i'm going to pop that video here i'm going to fasten that video up because it's about 40 minutes long so you guys can watch it okay gmo genetic modified organisms i think in my life i've never seen a particular topic that caused problems like this topic one people on side another people on side there's an argument as a matter of fact there's nothing you say about gmo that's going to please anybody whether for or against but my job today is to give you the facts on GMO on all that. Let's go. If you are here for conspiracy theory, please outside the door. That's not why we are here. We are here to learn. Let's start from G, genetic. What exactly does it mean? It simply means genes. Genes made up of DNA that send particular codes to give you something that you can see in an organism or how it acts. For example, when you burn your shite, that's how you look at your shite. You just know automatically this is my shite. Because if you're short, there's a possibility that that shite is going to be short. If you have bad head, there's a possibility that the shite is going to have bad head. If your head is triangle, like triangle seat, that shite is going to have head like triangle seat. One of the reasons why people start to do DNA testing is because they bought their shite and their shite looks like it doesn't have the same genes that they have. We understand that. Yes. But aside from how an organism looks, there are other certain things that, you know, you might also want, right? It could be that some people they used to fall sick to malaria. That could be a genetic trait. Some people cannot have HIV. That's a genetic trait, right? Now, this is just human being, though. Hope you know that you can also have these particular genes in plants. For example, some plants have big seeds, some plants have small seeds. Some plants have longer stems, some plants, insects cannot eat it. Some plants, insects used to attack. These are just genetic abilities that that plants full and come. But now, when we say genetic modification, some of us think that genetic modification actually started in 2024, 2025. It's not true. Genetic modification has been there since the days of our forefathers. So your forefathers have been doing genetic modification. Yes, I said it. It's just that they did not have lab. It was not accurate. There was no magnifying glass for them to test this thing. For example, if your forefather was a farmer and he found that, hmm, this particular plant have big seeds and I want to have big seeds the next season. Your father does something. Your forefather does something where, you know, selective breeding in case that plant, make sure a plant only eat alone so that they can give it more bigger crops next season. Your forefathers have been doing it. And it might shock you, but there are certain plants that if you see it today, that is not what it was in the beginning. For example, corn. Yes, the corn that you see now is not the corn that was in the beginning. The corn that you are seeing now was actually gotten from a wild grass known as teal seeds. Yes, so this is corn. This is what you are looking at is a modified corn by your forefathers. 
Another example of traditional genetic modification is anything from the cabbage family. Broccoli, cauliflower, kale, they were all gone by selective breeding. Yes. Another thing that was done by traditional genetic modification are the current apples that you're seeing now. The current apples that you're seeing now, shall just know that your forefathers genetically modified it. Why are you seeing that? Not the one that used to be before. Another white dog. Yes. Woof, woof, bingo. Bingo did not occur in the wild before. It was human beings that selectively bred wolves and then they gave birth to bingo because these things don't occur in the wild. Now, when we say modification, it just means, oh, there are certain genes that I want more than other genes. So I find my way or interfere in the process that occurs naturally so that I can get that gene more. Is GMO affecting our local farmers? But what that means simply means is that if you plant the modified seeds in a place where you have local seeds or very close to local seeds, cross-pollination can happen. It's either weed will carry the reproductive parts of that plant or insects will go to this place, fly to the other place, and before you know what's happening, cross-pollination can happen here. And if this modified seed is more dominant, it can overshadow the local seeds so that the local seeds can no longer germinate after a while. So that means that that local farmer no longer has a choice. If this particular modified seed are the sterile ones, it means that after a while, his seeds might not be able to grow anymore. You have taken that choice away from that local farmer. So yes, it can affect local farmers. However, there are other upsides to the genetically modified plants. For example, there are certain areas where you don't have enough rain. Everywhere is always dry, 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 dry. Some of these modified seeds have been genetically modified in such a way that it can grow in those very harsh areas. Another reason why there's also genetically modification in some of these things is pests. How many of you remember when if you buy beans, there's always carbon inside? That's one of the reasons why they now say, okay, rather than using carbide, let us modify these organisms in such a way that it is resistant to this particular insect so that this insect can no longer survive where this plant is. It's also done to increase plant yield. In other words, more plants, more production, more harvest for the farmer, more food for everybody, and that's one of the plot of the pros. Remember, like I said, we're not doing conspiracy here. It is pros, cons, good, bad, and the ugly. So that I can make your own decision. One of the solutions is that the government can designate areas in which this modified seed can be planted. They far away from any local seeds. So that the chances of cross-pollination are very little, giving local farmers a chance. Because some of them have not understood this new technology, and it's only fair that you give them the opportunity to decide what they want to do. This GMO thing that we're talking about now has actually been around since the 1990s, can't we? And scientists have been tracking it on and off the farm. So this is not the first time GMO is out. So those of you that are shouting, oh, this is something that just recent because it's the year 2000, it's not true. Since 1990s, we went in the lab, have been sold to consumers. Another concern about this GMO seed is that a lot of the GMO seeds that are currently in circulation are actually controlled by a few companies. And these companies can decide what they want to do with it. They can say, I'm not selling to the farmers anymore. Some of them can even decide some of the prices that they're selling to these farmers. Some of them can even decide who they're selling to. Some of them have locked their IP and their patents in such a way that sometimes even the farmers are meant to sign contracts to decide whether they continue buying their seed or they, or they use their normal seeds. There's also the concern that some of these modified seeds can actually go into a particular area and actually overshadow the local plants that are already occurring in that particular area, removing biodiversity from the particular topic. Some people are going around saying that GMO seeds, there's plenty chemical inside. Hmm. Let's say the truth and shame the devil. When you want to make GMO, you carry the DNA. DNA is the, like I said, it's like code. Code, small code that determines, for example, the color of your eye, the shape of your fingers. They carry that particular tiny code. It's small, they go inside, inside, find it. And then they carry a cell of a particular plant and then put the DNA inside that cell. Then they will not grow that particular cell that they just put inside, inside the tissue culture, and then this tissue starts to grow. By the time it has now grown, the seed from this one that has now grown is now the genetically modified seed. So as you can see, you have DNA, you have cell, you have plants, you have seeds. How do chemical is it inside? I don't know where people are getting this thing from. I also think that another people that have caused damage to this particular conversation are the people that are not experts on this issue. So everybody is just opening their mouth to be church or trying about it. Even me, I'm not an agricultural expert, but I'm trying my best to explain it to the barest minimum so that all of us can be informed. When you're making a decision, you know the decision that you're making and you're not just flying around with broadcast that another person just forwarded to you. Which now leads me to the next question. Can GMO wipe out the human population? Like I said very few ago, if you did not skip it, is that GMOs have actually been introduced since the 1990s. That's how many years ago. Almost 30, 30 something years ago. That's when it has been introduced. So if they're wiping out, almost all of us will not be alive by now. You also need to understand that you need to have a balanced view on some of these topics. Yes, we understand that there are concerns. We understand that there are benefits. We also understand that there are ugly parts. Your job as an adult is to understand all these three parts so that you can make an informed decision for yourself. We're just running around, they say it's going to wipe out the population. I even saw one that they said the DNA is supposed to control our mind. How? You, how? GMO are controlling population, I don't see it. And I say GMO is causing cancer. <sighs> there is no scientific study as of today that has linked GMO to cancer. Like I said, it is fairly recent. There are still studies that are going on. And when these studies come out fully, of course, we will use the scientific study to actually share some of this information to the public so that changes can be made. That's how science is done. Another concern is can GMO kill off natural foods? GMOs can be designed in such a way that they are more resistant than other local seeds. So that if you grow two of them in the same place, one might be more alabara 
and it can overshadow the other one. There were wiping it out. So that's where we talked about genetic biodiversity, all those big, big words, blah, 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 blah. Yes, because this one has been modified in such a way that it's stronger than the local seed, there is every chance that it can usually overshadow the other one, thereby taking off the chance. What we should now do is that there are certain things that must be put in place. For example, labeling. I want to go into a store, or you should be able to go into a store and choose which one you want. So that if you say, ah, me, I personally want to make a choice to not eat genetically modified seed, you should see it right there on the label that says non-genetically modified or genetically modified organism. You should be able to make that choice and it should be clear. So that has to be something that has to come into the picture so that everybody can make an informed choice for themselves. Another thing that we should be asking for is when it comes to research. There's something called independent research. So in other words, you find a person in the middle that can actually do the research that is not from the side of the people or on the side of the government. Their job is just to state the facts as they are and find out. It's not sponsored by any corporate body so that the findings are the findings. Because you already know that if the corporate people who are in charge of these seeds sponsor some of this research, some of the findings may never make it to the public. So independent research has to be a thing. Another thing we should be crying out for is the thing that we said in the beginning. Sites where there is genetically modified seeds planted should be far away from where we have local seeds planted so that we can reduce the impact on the local and genetic biodiversity. This is a very, very, very emotional conversation. People see nobody taking straight. Like, some people telling us, some people talking this thing like this. Some people are not taking straight in the comment section. Rather than learn, they are still arguing the argument that they've carried from their father's house or the PC or something and just running with it because it's a story they like. So if this story that I hear is not the story you like, please, Halele, add the door. We do not have all your kind of people here. Another thing you should be asking for, but this particular one is for yourself. Please stay informed. As a matter of fact, carry your whole account and actually enter this conversation because your, your information is very, 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 very important. So that you don't go around looking for people who just want sensational titles. So that it's going to give them clicks and likes. And at the end of the day, they have not educated anybody, but people are just running around with certain pictures in their head. This is also where we call on the government to be more transparent. But not just about transparency. Speak to the people where they are. Some of us are having conversations where we are having conversations here. Yeah, the people that we are speaking to, they are somewhere here. And the information is not passing across. And so because the information is not passing across properly, people are running around with different information in their head. You cannot be trying to do something, but the people who we are trying to help are getting another version of that particular experiment. It's going to scatter everything. So please, communicate with us at our level. Don't be speaking big English when you want to communicate with us about certain particular emotional topics. Talk to us at our level. And I really hope that this video has done some bit of education. I know it's not all the education, because at the end of the day, you're still going to choose what you want. As a matter of fact, me, I'm not trying to confuse you. This video is made for people who are genuinely confused, who want to know the good, the bad, and the ugly, and what they can do. You will not find conspiracy theories like this video. As a matter of fact, I will not even talk about it. I see it, but I won't talk about it. So that your body will prepare you to move. Anyhow, Sha, continue to inform yourself. This is new technology. We are still learning as we go. Like I said, there's some bit of harm or concern that is affecting us locally. There's some bit of benefits, and there's even the ugly that needs to be modified. So at the end of the day, do you? So what are the broader implications in what is our Akpoko doctor has got himself in? This controversy goes beyond one influencer. It raises big concerns about food sovereignty corporate patent control over seeds and Nigeria's real agricultural challenges like insecurity, poor funding and corruption, not lack of biotech solutions. Critics went on to warn that GMO seeds are patented and non-reproducible, meaning farmers must repurchase seeds each season, potentially increasing dependency on multinational companies. They just want to come and make big money in Nigeria. Guys, let me know your thoughts and opinion in the comment section because I've not got a lot to say about this story. So, what next? Afroco doctor insists his intention was to inform, not persuade in that video. But Nigerians are demanding more transparency and acknowledging risks, not just benefits. The question remains, should Nigeria push forward with GMO adoption or prioritize local solutions? What do you think? Leave your thoughts and opinion in the comment section. Like I said, are GMOs Nigeria's future or a foreign risk? Let's take the conversation going on, okay? This is the end of this data food I have for you. If you've watched it now and you've not yet subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll catch up with you in another video. Alright? Bye guys. Bye everyone.